From 12 News, your local election headquarters, this is Newsmakers. Welcome to this special edition of Newsmakers, a debate between the two candidates for Bristol County Sheriff. I'm Tim White alongside 12 News Politics Editor Ted Nisi. Joining us remotely for this debate, the candidates for Sheriff, Republican incumbent Thomas Hodgson. He's on the right side of your screen and his Democratic challenger Paul Huro, who is currently mayor of Attleboro. And a note to our viewers, this debate was supposed to happen here in our studio, but Mr. Haro has tested positive for COVID and both candidates agreed to join virtually. Now each candidate will have an opportunity to make a one minute closing statement at the end of this debate. Mr. Haro, Mr. Hodgson, this is obviously not an ideal setup, but this is a critical election as the term for sheriff is six years. So we wanted to make sure the debate went on. As you both know, there is no strict format to this debate, but if you are taking too long or not answering the questions, we will jump in. Let's begin. Gentlemen, the Bristol County Sheriff's primary job is to run the local jails. In that set sense, it is about management. Mr. Haro, you said you think the jails are not well managed and you want to change that. What do you argue are the biggest problems with how Mr. Hodgson is managing the county correction system and what do you think needs to change? Mr. Haro. Okay, so the first overarching problem is that we need to have a chief executive who is willing to admit when he makes a mistake, and I had never seen that happen before. As mayor, I admit when I make mistakes. Um, yeah, I listen to the people around me. So let's take suicides, for example. He has the highest rate of suicide in the state, and that is something that he says, nope, we're doing everything just fine. And, you know, if you don't admit that there's a problem, you can't fix it and you can't get better. Um, it was third, Boston Globe listed as third highest in patronage positions. That's costing you and me a lot of money. There are a lot of uh, programs that are being offered, and we have no idea if these programs work. We have no idea if they reduce recidivism. And that's your tax dollars and my tax dollars. And, you know, that's something we need to actually look at, you know, make sure the programs work. The drug treatment program reduces drug use after release. Make sure the anger management program releases, um, works after release. So, you know, that you know, I measured this when I worked in jail and I worked in prison. This is what I used to do. And now I'm the mayor of a city, which has a much larger budget and a lot, you know, more employees than the sheriff's office. And, you know, I'm up to the task and I think a lot of people are ready for change. <laughs> All right, Mr. Hodgson, you heard him there. He rattled off a whole litany of issues he's taking with um, you as sheriff over the past couple of decades. Uh, it, in a nutshell, he says you have mismanaged the correctional system in Bristol County. How do you respond? Well, Mr. Oro is not, my opponent is not uh, at all qualified to be the sheriff. He doesn't have any qualification. He was three years in corrections. And, you know, simply reading books and, and looking at computer screens doesn't qualify you to manage a complex uh, operation like ours. He said that, you know, we had the highest suicide rate. Uh, he's talking about over a period of, I forget the number of years that they looked at it, uh, but he didn't mention that three years after that, uh, we had no suicides. So when you factor those three years in, we end up being probably one of the lowest. But the truth is, and he knows this, suicides are the number one cause of death in prisons. He came to our last debate and showed a piece of paper that said, these are the things the sheriff ought to be doing. Unfortunately for him, he didn't understand, we've been doing those things for 10 years. We, in, we independently have our, every one of our suicides investigated by state police. Uh, and the DA, and we do have a full mental health um, uh, group that, that does the, um, the, the review of that after each one. And frankly, we've been just, again, once again, consistently, we've been certified by the National Commission on Correctional Health Care, which is the gold standard for medical care and mental health care in our facilities. So we are doing those things, and Mr. Hero's, you know, suggestions have all been being done for almost 10 years. All right, why don't we stay on this topic? Obviously, uh, suicides and jails have been a big topic in Bristol County. It was obviously a question that we had for this debate, so we're gonna go into that now. You heard him there, uh, Mr. Haro. He is saying you're looking at outdated data when it comes to the jails in Bristol County and suicides. How do you respond? 
Well, I'm really glad he suggested that because the New Bedford Light, a reporter who's working for them named Arthur Hirsch, he's a freelance reporter, he actually just released a, 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 a story the last probably 24 hours that has updated numbers of the suicides and we're still the highest in the state. Um, you know, so those are no longer outdated numbers. That's still the case. We still have the highest rate of suicide in the state. He talked about how I don't, I'm not qualified. I'm the mayor of a city that has a larger budget that he deals with. He didn't have that experience when he became sheriff. I have more corrections experience than he has when he uh, became sheriff. Um, I, you know, was, I managed people in, uh, in the mass prison system. I was assistant to the commissioner of the Philadelphia jail system. Uh, you know, I was the fifth largest jail system in the country. I worked directly for the commissioner. I was a chief statistician and criminologist for the system. And you know, so for him to say I don't have the experience means he had even less qualification when he became sheriff two and a half decades ago. So the fact is that right now I'm actually managing a budget two and a half times larger than his. I have you know, a compl complex organization. Um, I have a police department I oversee. We've increased police funding, tripled the training budget for the police department, bought riot gear for them, created a cyber unit. You know, my qualifications are not up for debate. I mean, you know, as I've said before, the you know, in a campaign, you're supposed to go after somebody's weaknesses, not their strengths. Okay, I mean, Mr. That's, that's thank you, I'm Mr. Hurrell. Mr. Hanchin, I'm going to give you so, a minute to respond here. Well, thank you. First of all, um, Mr. Hurrell, once again, misrepresents the truth. He says, I didn't have experience before I became sheriff. I had two and a half years in one of the top command positions in the Bristol County Sheriff's Office as liaison to the chiefs of police, as the head of internal affairs, the head of law enforcement, and the head of canine. And, and um, Mr. Hurrell was a paper pusher. He, he tries to embellish this idea that he was somehow something more than what he really was. He was there two years or two and a half years in Philadelphia at a time where they were under federal oversight. And he was also one year at the DOC. I've checked with both those locations and know exactly, I know exactly why Mr. Hill wasn't there anymore. And he's somebody that did not dedicate himself to this profession because he's not a law, he has no law enforcement experience and he has very minimal yeah, experience. It's like saying, you know, you're an orderly in a hospital and you can be the uh, the chief executive officer of the hospital. I mean, that's ridiculous. And and so this is what Mr. Hero continues to sort of promote. But the facts are what they are. And, and he, there's no way he could possibly, possibly uh, match up to the experience I have. All right, Mr. Rowe, 30 seconds on this. And then I'll let, uh, give another 30 seconds to Mr. Hanson. And then we're going to go to Ted for a question. Mr. Rowe, 30 seconds. So the incumbent sheriff, he still, you know, recognizes that I had more corrections experience than he did when he became sheriff. He, you know, he just said he had two and a half years of correcting experience. I had almost about four years of correcting experience, uh, maybe a little bit more, and you include the consulting I did. It was more than one year at the DOC, but I was leaving the DOC to either take a job with the FBI, which I had a conditional offer for, or I was going back to grad school at the Harvard Kennedy School. I chose the Harvard Kennedy School thinking I would go back to uh, the FBI afterwards. That didn't happen. I ended up running for state representative and now I'm mayor. But my qualifications, again, I run a city, an organization larger than the sheriff's organization. I have a larger budget, more employees, and that's part of my equation. That's okay. part of my Thank experience. Thank you, Mr. Rowe. Mr. Hodgson, 30 so, seconds. So look, um, th this job that I have requires um, somebody to have good temperament, you have to be a uniter, you have to build leadership teams, you have to be able to bring together people to overcome challenges and so forth. And Mr. Hero doesn't have that temperament. And it's clear in the way he's managed the, the mayor's office. He's got complaints. He's gone after the spouse of a firefighter, uh, attacked her uh, when she asked him to stop com you know, contacting him. He continued. And Mr. Hero has this habit of doing this, uh, even up until yesterday, he's still fighting with people on his website. Great leaders don't do that. Great leaders accept criticisms and they look at a way that they can possibly perhaps, um, you know, find a way to, to bring these people to a solution that's well, going to empower Mr. the agency. Mr. Hodgson, you actually, uh, you actually, you're actually week. alluding to what uh, the next question is being. I want to ask you both about some of the criticisms you faced in the campaign. And I am going to start with Mr. Hero. And I think uh, the topic you were just alluding to, Mr. Hodgson, uh, WBSM radio reported this week, Mr. Hero, that a state labor board released a decision finding that you made, quote, coercive comments about the president of the firefighters union in Attleboro. And notices are now being posted in City Hall saying you violated the law. What do you say to voters who think that's a red flag about your interpersonal skills in a leadership position? 
Okay, so that was the first ULP I've lost, and that just came out two weeks before the election. But we're going to win this on appeal. Now, Mr. Hodgson wants to go after my record. He had 25 ULPs, unfair labor practices, in his first two years as being sheriff. He also threatened the jobs of five employees. He suspended five employees for exercising their First Amendment right. This went all the way to federal court. And in that suspension, if you read that case, the uh, Govey and Davington case, you know, it, he actually said you can go ahead I'll, I'll fire you and you can get your job back but in the meantime you're going to be making five or six dollars an hour and he also threatened their families he actually said you know that if you don't settle this contract you're not going to get as much money and you know that's going to be a negative impact on your families it's on page eight of the gate uh Gouvea and davington case that you know happened years ago he has seven active lawsuits against him right now i have zero and so yeah i'm going to win that on appeal we have a lot of good reason for that and i do communicate with my constituents a lot through social media absolutely i it's a it's a very effective tool and you know i i don't think i said anything wrong but i do wish i had never said anything in the first place all right mr hodson you hear him saying this is a, a pot so, calling the kettle black situation so, your response so mr Haro again this represents the truth the fact of the matter is if he knew anything about corrections look when i took over there were clearly things that needed to be done differently. We had to build in accountability for our staff, more accountability for inmates. And you know what? We had a bad, bad group that was the, the head of the Makufu organization back then who were, were real antagonists who were gonna fight us every step of the way. We were trying to build an organization that would be accountable to the people. So yes, you're always gonna get people that are gonna file these, these, these uh, objections and claims. We have to defend the taxpayer and, and that's my job. And you know, for Mr. Hero to suggest that somehow, um, you know, he has the, the temperament, look what he's done. I mean, who goes after the employee? I mean, the, the spouse of an employee, right? Because, and then says to, to the effect that, you know, I could have fired your husband, right? And um, so you need to remember that going forward when you're, you're criticizing me. Who does that? No leader does that. What you do is, if you have different sort of opinions, I did with the unions, I, we work through it. And you know what? You're going to get lawsuits in this business. Every sheriff's office does. But you know what? We're going to defend them. We're going to do the right things. And guess what? Over the course of time, when I made all these empowerment changes, today, all my unions support me 100%. You know why? Because we've built an organization that's nationally accredited, not once, but twice, because my people learned about coming together, being a team, and that's what great leaders do. All right, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna give uh, Mr. Hero 30 sure seconds in order to respond to that, and then I have a question for Mr. Hodgson. Mr. Hero, your brief response. Sure. So the uh, wife of this firefighter actually reached out to me first uh, through my Facebook page and I responded at first not knowing she was the wife of a firefighter. And I thought I was, you know, I articulating that I was giving them the benefit of the doubt. I'm not trying to stick it to them. And that's what I was trying to explain. Now, Hodgson, you know, Sheriff, he just said that he's got the credit, um, sorry, the support of the unions. I was just contacted anonymously yesterday by somebody who actually said that he got the support of the union this time because he gave promotions to the, some of the union stewards. I mean, that's how he got this endorsement. He, he was given out promotions. And there are people who are, you know, this could be fact-checked. And I think this is something that should be investigated. Well, you know, that's, but he that's a, that's a uh, Mr. Yeah. O, that's a fresh allegation. So I, I do have to give Mr. Hodgson 30 seconds to respond to that specifically. But then I do want to move to a different question, Mr. Hodgson. Okay, again, Mr. Hero, an anonymous person told him that, of course. But you know what? This is the problem with Mr. Hero. He has nothing to talk about about what he could do for this department and he has no real qualifications so what he does is he goes to these anonymous this anonymous that and listens to these people and tries to use it to create a narrative to get cheap political points please are you kidding me we've built this organization we are amongst the best in the nation because of my staff and you know what the Makufu union i didn't have an election last time but they were ready to endorse me they didn't need to but they gave they gave me checks they wanted to do everything they could for standouts that's something that was earned over the over time by building a great team 
who is now recognized as one of the best in the nation. All right, Mr. Hodgson, a, a specific question for you now. You've been a member of a group yes, called sir. the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association. The Anti-Defamation League has called it, quote, an anti-government extremist group. From what I've read, leaders of the group believe that county sheriffs outrank other government officials when it comes to law enforcement in their own counties, <laughs> even up to including potentially the president of the United States. Is that your belief about where a county sheriff ranks in the hierarchy when it comes to law enforcement? No, you know what? One of the reasons I've been able to build the coalitions of law enforcement and why they're all endorsing me, including state police, is because I don't care. I don't care about titles. I really don't. I don't. If, if you look it up in the dictionary, you'll see it says the the sheriff is the chief law enforcement officer of the county. Law enforcement, by the way, to my opponent. Um, and and although that's the case, when I built a coalition and brought the chiefs of police in. That was the first time it was ever done right after I took over. And I told them, I said, listen, we're gonna meet regularly. I don't wanna be the head person of this association. I want you all to elect whoever it's gonna be. I will be there to work, support, and integrate whatever way we can to support you, be, to, for all of us to be able to keep our community safe and do what we promised we would do when we took our oath and we, we, uh, we made the promise to the people. And that's why we built these associations and that's why all the law enforcement agencies are endorsing me, including state police, including including the former attorney general, Frank Bellotti, uh, who is, um, is is of the other party, but somebody who is, has believed in me and, and said, this is a guy who's doing the right things and I couldn't be more proud or honored to have those endorsements. But specific and, and to this group, Mr. Hodgson, well uh, the why, then why did you join the, if the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association folks believe uh, in the superseding of sheriffs over other law enforcement, the, you know, the FBI, even up to the president, why, why did you join if that's not your view? I've joined, I, 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 I've joined, I'm part of the National Sheriffs Association, I'm part of the, of course, Massachusetts Sheriffs Association, I am somebody who brings sheriffs together. All sheriffs don't necessarily agree with every single thing in in uh, in, the, in the different missions. But I, I'm not actively involved in that group. I'm, I'm part of it. I've, I've been a member there for years. I have never attended their their conventions. Everyone can have different opinions about different things. But the fundamental thing we believe in, first and foremost, is our mission which is to do everything we can to keep our neighborhoods and our communities and this nation safe. And so I will stand with all sheriffs. It doesn't mean necessarily that we all necessarily agree with every single opinion of every association. Well, Mr. Hero, you have supporters out there calling Mr. Hodgson an extremist, citing this. He says he's not very involved in that group. Do you stand by what the, uh, your supporters are saying? Absolutely. Sheriff Hodgson's on the board of advisors for an organization called FAIR, who's uh, been identified as a Southern uh, Poverty Law Center as a white supremacist hate group, whose founder said white people are just better. I mean, this is who he is associated with. Now let's talk about his endorsements for a second. That's right, he does have some endorsements from the police, but the majority of the police organizations in Bristol County have not endorsed him. They are staying out of this race. So he has 100% of the uh, endorsements of the people who have endorsed him, that's right. But I also have a former police chief who is supporting me, George McNeil. He, he and I were uh, partners together in the uh, in the primary. I think you were opponents. <laughs> Well, I mean, partners is, you know, we're partners now. We're, you know, we, we were, were opponents mm -hmm. in, um, in the primary. I was, you know, trying not to be antagonistic. But, you know, he has he is now supporting me. He worked with Sheriff Hodgson over the years, and he has said there's a lot of problems with the way the sheriff's office works with the county jails. I'm sorry, the sheriff's office works with the county police departments. But the police departments are the principal law enforcement. Those are the organizations responsible for reducing crime in Bristol County, not the sheriff. The sheriff runs the jail care, custody, control, and rehabilitation. The sheriff does have limited law enforcement authority, but not nearly to the crime prevention degree that Sheriff Hodgson likes to talk about. He's taking credit away from the hardworking police departments throughout the county. The police departments are the ones patrolling the streets. All right, Mr. Hurl, I, I, I'm going to give Mr. Hodgson 20 seconds to respond, and then we need to move to Tim. So let's talk about endorsements. Mr. Hurl's endorsements are not from here. He's got these activist groups, the defund police groups, funded by Bloomberg and, and George Soros. And you know what? These people want to defund the police. They want the criminals out of jail and on the streets. And you know what? That's not going to happen in this county. I've worked too hard for the last 25 years 
to build the coalitions, the relationships with the PDs. And Mr. Haro using Chief McNeil, he didn't get his contract renewed after, after his first contract in Somerset. And the other chiefs, they all work with me. They're all supportive of me. They're all part of my partnership. And that's why we train their canines. That's why we have the Comfort Dog Coalition that we have. That's why we have the first two COVID dogs in the nation. That's why when we come together and we do tabletop exercises for them, because I have the experience. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Hodgson. I think we've litigated this section enough. I'm gonna give you an each one minute on this topic. It's an important one. You had brought it up earlier, Mr. Hero, uh, in the first question. I wanna talk about recidivism, which is when a convicted criminal reoffends. Both of you have bickered in previous debates and on the campaign trail about the rate of recidivism at, at the Bristol County Jails. Whether it's 20% or 40%, whatever the number is, I think you can both agree that recidivism occurs. What role, if any, does a sheriff play in reducing recidivism in their jurisdiction? Mr. Harrell, we'll start with you. It's absolutely essential. The sheriff should be offering programs designed to reduce recidivism. You offer an evidence-based program uh, that reduces uh, anger management issues, that reduces uh, drug use, because these are people going back into the society. So we're supposed to be offering those, and those are done to a limited degree, but then we can't just take it for granted. We have to actually measure those. In 25 years, this has never been done. It's not a priority to the sheriff. He also says we can't measure the recidivism rate in the Bristol County uh, Jail, and that's absolutely not true. I was personally the per I was the one who did it in Philadelphia, a system 20 times larger than the, Phil uh, the Bristol County Jail system. I did the report. I've got the skills set to do this. I know how to work with people to have to make this happen. And when I'm sheriff, we're going to uh, produce a report. We're going to show what the rate of recidivism is for Bristol County specifically, and then we're going to uh, measure the programs to make sure they work. We're going to facilitate. Uh, prisoner reentry and improve partnerships within the community. Um, there are a lot of people who want to work with the jail system, but they can't because it's just too much of a closed organization. And that's not good for reducing recidivism. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Hero. Mr. Hodgson, uh, the question again was, uh, what role, if any, does a sheriff play in reducing recidivism? So again, Mr. Hero has no qualifications for, to, to run a sheriff's department. He, he doesn't even understand what we're doing there. He's saying we need anger management, we need drug rehab, we need all of these things. We've been doing those since I took over and expanded them. And not only that, we do measure them. We do measure them. And we have to measure them for different programs with the federal government to determine what is the, are they useful programs? Are they not useful programs? And what's really funny about all this, and again, this is Mr. Hero all over again, my opponent, he, what he does is he essentially will, will tell you something about, we're not measuring recidivism. It's really important. 10 to 20% of the people inside of prison are the ones who will benefit from the programs inside. But the real failure of recidivism is when they get out, not having housing, not having follow-up medical and mental health care. That's where the real problem is. If they had that as a continuum of care, they wouldn't probably, many of them, not all, but some will come back. But the, the, the other part that he doesn't tell you is he's written numerous papers on, for the Huntington Post with his, his opinions and things like that. And in the, in the very articles he wrote, he said, recidivism, we can't really measure it. It doesn't measure against programs. And you know what? So did Senator Bonsberger. When I was on the 101 Commission for two years with uh, with uh, Representative Daly as well and a few sheriffs. All right. Uh, gentlemen, Bonsberger said, we can't do, we uh, can't even bother with recidivism. Gentlemen, believe it or not, we are getting it, very close. Based on the we are getting very close to your Sorry. closing. That's okay. I appreciate it. We are getting very close to your closing statement. So I did want to briefly ask something, and it came up earlier. Uh, and I'm only going to be able to give you two 30 seconds on this. But as you said, this has become a national race um, and getting national news attention. Of course, you've been a national figure uh, in the sheriff's office, Mr. Hodgson. So I want to ask you a simple question. You were honorary co-chair of President Trump's re-election campaign in 2020 in Massachusetts. Do you accept the results of the 2020 presidential election? 30, 30 seconds. Of course I do. Look, the, 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 the outcomes were the outcomes. Uh, there are people that are still questioning it, but you know what? The, the election was over, it's done. There's nothing more that can, can happen with it, and we move on. Um, America needs that. We need that to be able to focus on what we have to do. So the bottom line is this. Um, my my involvement with the former president, I'll go down to Washington for any president that's willing to sit with me and help me build policies through the White House that are going to benefit me and our our families and our community. Because you know what? That's my charge. That's right. the fundamental responsibility and, 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 of government.
Ms. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Sorry, as I say, we're getting so close to the end. Mr. Hero, briefly, because yep, he got a question on national uh, politics. I'll give you one, too. You're a Democrat. Do you want President Biden to seek another term in 2024? I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure who is going to be running um, in the primary against Biden. So I'd like to see that. I want to make sure that we, you know, the the um, presidency doesn't fall back into Republican hands because I I have not been impressed with what I've seen. Um, but you know, Biden may not be the best choice. That's true. But Mr. Hodgson misrepresents his allegiance to Trump. There's the work that we do, but there's also the campaign aspect. You know, Mr. Hero, Mr. Hero, I have to stop you here because I do want to give you each time to give a one minute closing statement. We flipped a coin prior to this debate. So it's a random choice. Uh, Mr. Hodgson, you have one minute for closing remarks. Well, let me say thank you to Channel 12 for, for hosting this um, this debate. And um, I guess the, uh, the simplest way to end this would be to say that I've been doing this for 25 years. I have a law enforcement background. I've been immersed in building this organization, providing more services to seniors, youth, collaborating with law enforcement, building stronger, stronger uh, coalitions in the community to keep our community safe. And going forward, this is a very simple choice for the people. You want somebody with no law enforcement experience who's being backed by Bloomberg and the rest of them who want to come in and tell us how safe our communities can be or not, which is what they're about. Or do you want someone that's got a proven record for 25 years, who's committed to you, has a passion for law enforcement, started my career in law enforcement, and is not going to be somebody that's going to be, you know, way, you know, swayed by by some outside group in New York. Look what New York looks like now. Look what San Francisco and Chicago look like. We don't need Mr. Hero went to Washington to find out from a group down there that he should run for sheriff. Why didn't he talk to okay, the people Ms. here? Okay, Mr. Hodgson, I'm sorry, your one minute is up. Mr. Hero, your one minute closing statements. Thank you. Um, and thank you for having us. And uh, Sheriff Hodgson, I appreciate you agreeing to do this through Zoom. I do have COVID. And, um, but I uh, have spent a lot of time knocking on doors. I did talk to the people of Bristol County. I've knocked on about 12,000 doors over the last uh, probably eight or so months. And I've heard people want change. I'm the mayor of Attleboro. I have management experience. We don't have scandals going on in Attleboro. I worked in jail. I worked in prison. I have a master's in criminology. I've done the things that need to be done to effectively manage a system like the Bristol County Sheriff's Office. And uh, when I'm elected, we are going to actually put our money where our mouth is. We're going to prove that we're actually reducing recidivism. I'm going to publish the reports. I've asked the sheriff to produce these reports. He hasn't. You know, there is no evidence that he's keeping people safe. There are a lot of reports talking about the failed uh, health conditions at the sheriff's office. You know, there are reports talking about the um, the auditor and how money was misappropriated. There's, um, you know, the, the attorney general's report. There's the suicides. We can do better. I'm not going to be sheriff for life. If elected, I'm going to max out on two terms. OK, thank you, Mr. Hero. Your one minute is up. Gentlemen, uh, gentlemen, we have 30 seconds left. Real quick, do you support or oppose, Mr. Hodgson, do you support or oppose term limits for a sheriff in Bristol County? Support or oppose? I, I oppose. Okay, and Mr. Hero, support or oppose term limits for Bristol County Sheriff? I support term limits for all executive capacities, including this one. All right, gentlemen, yeah. I uh, greatly appreciate your time doing this. Again, I know it's not ideal to do it uh, via, you know, remotely, but as we said, it is a six-year term, so this is an important election. Election day is November 8th. If you missed the debate, it's on WPRI.com. Next week, a debate between the candidates for Rhode Island General Treasurer. For Ted Nisi, I'm Tim White. We will see you next week on Newsmakers.